The last major science work that came from the Large Hadron Collider, the Collider finished in 2012, did pretty well. A Higgs, Higgs boson emerged and has uh, rightfully given Nobel Prizes to Anglair and uh, Higgs himself. Then since 2012 it's been in shutdown and basically I think it's like building a new machine again. The, all the detectors have been revamped, the LHC itself, all the magnets have been tested and the connections between the magnets tested. They've put in new systems to try and guarantee that when the beam goes around it's, it doesn't stray off and cause quenches. They're about ready to go, they're ready to rock and roll. It's run two, yeah, and this run should go for a few years now. So run one, which was the run from 2010 to 2012, they managed to get the beam energy up to 4 TV per beam, so 8 TV where they, they collide in the, in the detectors. Now they're managing to get it up to 6.5 TV per beam, so 13 TV uh, collisions, so that's a what, a 40 or 50 percent increase in, in energy. With that comes all sorts of benefits and also they've managed, they're hoping to increase what's known as the luminosity, the number of collisions per second that will be detected has gone from something like, if I remember my numbers right from before, 600 million a second up to a, over a billion a second now. So you've got many more collisions at much higher energies, that means you're, you're potentially probing a new region of the energy space if that's available to create new particles. Because the key thing that they'll initially be trying to do is make sure that they've understood the Higgs, the Higgs field itself, which is the field that's responsible for the masses of the fundamental particles. We've discovered the Higgs, but it's like going into a gold mine and finding a nugget of gold you won't then just leave it there and, and or take it home and say that's it. You're now going to try and explore all the properties you know about the Higgs. And so one of the big questions would be, is the Higgs that we see the only Higgs? Are there other Higgs particles that might be, that, that might be there that come from uh, beyond the standard model of particle physics? Or if there aren't, then can we test the Higgs that's there to such a degree that we, we think we know what, how it should decay with the standard model so we can, by looking at more and more events of the Higgs decaying, we can actually test you know, to much more precision whether or not the standard model's fitting the data. Run one hmm. gave us the Higgs. So presumably the energy levels were right. We hit the sweet spot that we needed to yeah. be smashing at the right powers and speeds to yeah. show us the Higgs. Yeah. Now that they're juicing it up, and smashing things even harder, hmm. are they not moving away from that sweet spot? No, no, it will include that spot. It's, it's that they've just got much more energy. So 8 TV was enough energy there to actually produce a Higgs. Higgs's decay rapidly, 10 to the minus 20 seconds or so, they've gone again, and what you pick up is the debris of the decay. So perhaps you know, one of the most clear-cut signs that they found was a pair of photons shooting out and four leptons coming out. By looking at the distribution of those and the number of those, they were, they were able to say this has come from a Higgs. Well, having even more energy just means it's easier to produce these Higgs, so the, you'd expect you're going to produce even more of them, because there's all of this extra energy there that can produce the Higgs. But what it also has, potentially, is imagine there's a Higgs that at 8 TV we couldn't produce. We didn't have enough energy to produce that. Higgs that might be coming from, say, a supersymmetric extension of the standard model or some extension, then with, with a bit of luck with 13 TeV, maybe we just enter that regime where occasionally we can produce those Higgs and we'll look for the decay of those as well. For me, it's really an incredible thing that has happened in my lifetime. If there's one, then we have a real issue which I don't think we've touched on and you don't hear very much about. It's called the hierarchy problem. There are different mass scales that we experience in physics. The Higgs has got the mass of 125 GeV, okay, that's, that's the mass that we couldn't predict it, but that's what it came out to be, 125 point something. Now, there's another natural mass scale in physics which is associated with the Planck scale. Now, whereas the Higgs scale is 125 GeV, the Planck scale is about 10 to the 18 GeV. We don't really understand is why nature has done this. It corresponds in actual fact to the fact that the 
The electro weak force, the weak force, is something like 10 to the 32 times stronger than the force of gravity. Why is the force of gravity so small compared to the, to the weak force? Or another way of saying it is, why is the mass associated with the Higgs particle so much smaller than the natural Planck scale, which is the, the mass you associate up at the, at the gravitational scale? But why that is a problem is that we expect these two to couple. We know the Higgs has mass it couples through gravity, everything couples through gravity, and it gets influenced by the mass of, the, of, the, of this heavier particle to such an extent that actually you expect the mass of the Higgs to rise and rise and rise and rise and rise until it becomes comparable to that heavy mass scale. The fact we don't see that, the fact that there is only this one Higgs we see that has this mass, is we, why is it like that? How come its mass hasn't gone up to this ultra high scale. A single Higgs by itself can't explain it. We don't have a nice mechanism to do it. So this is one of the key reasons why people have gone beyond the standard model. They've introduced ideas which will actually mean that the, the natural rise of this mass is, is stopped. The most well known example of this is supersymmetry. So what happens with supersymmetry is when all the fermions, the electrons, the protons, etc., all the quarks start coupling in to, and interacting with the Higgs and being driven up, driving the Higgs up to higher and higher scales through other interactions with gravity, then what you actually do is you introduce a new set of particles, the supersymmetric partners of all of these electrons and quarks, and they come in in such a way that they actually cancel off all of these contributions. They exactly cancel them off. So as long as supersymmetry holds, these contributions get cancelled off. So all of this rising in the effective mass of the Higgs gets, gets brought down again because every rise due to, say, an electron gets actually compensated by, by the selectron, its supersymmetric partner, and it brings it back down. And this is a way of then stabilising the mass of the Higgs. But the problem is... Oh, it may not be a problem with a bit of luck, the LHC will find something. We haven't seen any evidence yet of supersymmetry, right? The, what we found is all perfectly consistent with the standard model. So one of the things we've, we've already established by the fact that we haven't seen any evidence of these supersymmetric particles at the moment, that already puts a, um, a lower bound on the mass that these particles can have. We're, we've already reached energy scales of, of 8 TeV or so, which means that the supersymmetric particles must have masses at least above that energy scale. Remember, E equals mc squared. The idea that we're doing here is that we're colliding the protons, the protons are annihilating, and the, the energy that's released is then sort of redistributed into new particles. If somehow all that energy could get redistributed into a pair of supersymmetric particles, then we know that that, that pair would have to have a, a mass of order, at least of order 8 TeV or so, otherwise we would have already seen them. There would have already been enough energy in the collision, and that, that isn't. So we have to go to higher energies in order to be able to hopefully probe the regime where these heavier particles are existing. So as long as the heavier particles aren't too heavy compared to the 13.5 TeV, then we should be able to produce them. So what happens? A petabyte of data comes out, it goes down these cables here, it goes all the way out, it goes downstairs, and it goes into this, this room that's full of electronics. The electronics brings it all in and then it filters it. It makes very fast decisions and says, I, I like that, I don't like that. And it throws away the vast majority of it. It really makes you feel like you're really in the heart of, the, of this machine now. I mean, of course, where, where we're stood now, you wouldn't be able to stand when this thing's on. Too much radiation flying around, too many particles that could...